Truck Daddy. Truck Daddy. Is that your name? It's not my name. Oh. No. Is Trucko your full name? No. God. Uh, my first name is Tyler. My last name is Trucko. That makes sense. Yeah. What's your middle name? Nicholas. That's cute. Thank you. Yeah. Has <laughs> <laughs> the interview started yet? Or? I don't know. All right. Maybe. If Kara likes it, she'll put it in. Sounds good. Okay. Now I want to start with um, where you grew up and then when you joined uh, Wilson. Sure. And then we'll kind of go through that. All right. Uh, I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, Naperville, Illinois. Mm -hmm. um, went to school at the University of Montana. Basically came on with Jim Palmer trucking from there. Took an internship with them. What um, year was that? I think 2014, 2015 probably. Mm -hmm. Um, so they, shortly after we acquired them sometime in 2014, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I, I actually sent in an application and spoke with the Wilson gang. So I didn't have any affiliation with the previous owners or anything like that. Found these guys on Craigslist, actually, I think was the, the initial post. Really? So, what yeah. was the post? I think Lisa posted it. I don't even remember exactly what it was. But I was a, I was a management information systems major um, and, and saw something that said information systems on the post. Uh -huh. Sent in an application. I needed an internship. And so I were they looking for someone for IT? No, no. So the whole IT thing is a whole other story. <laughs> okay. I'm not an IT major, despite what a lot of people think. Um, business major. But anyway, so I sent okay. in this application. I saw like information systems, and it was a posting for a fleet manager position. Mm -hmm. um, so I sent in an application. Lisa responded, um, basically said that she wanted to get me in for an interview or at least speak with me or something like that, and kind of went through a, a number of different interview processes, um, ended up speaking with Cameron and I think Skip as well. And they basically determined that I'm not fit for a fleet manager. I was like, you know, 20, I think, guy, I, was, I think I was 20 years old. It. I was from like Naperville, Illinois, <laughs> like the suburbs of Chicago. Um, had no idea what trucking was. Didn't know the first thing about it. Uh -huh. um, but they basically were like, hey, we have internships available if you're interested. We'll bring you out for that. See if, you know, see if it's something that you want to do. And if, you know, if you want to do it, then maybe we can go from there. We'll see if we can get you an internship. So um, did that and then wound up <clears throat> getting offered a job that following summer in Missoula. So took that. Loved nice. Missoula. Decided I was going to do it. Heck yeah. What brought you to Missoula originally if you grew up in Chicago? College mainly. Um, wanted to go out west. My brother went to school out in Colorado. Mm. Um, visited him one time. Just kind of liked the west and started looking at schools up in Washington, Montana, um, Colorado. And nothing was really fitting. And Montana actually was the last place that I was visiting, so it was kind of predetermined that that's where I was going to go. Was it? Yeah, um, which You're ended like, up I being great. Like I got in, it's the last thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. it ended up being great. I love the university. Looking back, like I wouldn't have, I, yeah. you know, I wouldn't have changed a thing that I did. So yep. it was a, it was a good outcome. That's cool. Yep. You have a bunch of brothers. Is I got right? two brothers, one sister. Okay. And where do you fit in between all? I'm that? the youngest of four. The baby. The baby. That explains a lot. Yeah. I'm just playing. That's me. <laughs> um. So I heard you were going to be doing stand-up comedy. No. True? Oh, my God, no. Why I'm not? not? Be doing You're funny, comedy. dude. Yeah, not, not quite. You put a camera in my face, and I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I freeze. I'm like a deer in headlights. <laughs> don't know what to do with my yeah, hands. I'm surprised my voice hasn't cracked or something yet. So <laughs> It will. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Just edit that out. Um, yeah, for sure. So from how long were you in uh, Missoula before you moved out here to Pacific? Uh, including college. So I actually... Graduated from college and I worked for Jim Palmer for two years. Um, wound up leaving the company, not for any reason against Wilson or Jim Palmer, anything like that. Um, wanted to get back to Chicago. I'd spent six years away from home. Mm -hmm. um, really didn't go home too frequently. I went home for a few summers and basically just decided that I wanted to get back to Chicago. Sure. Spent some time out there, probably like seven months working for another carrier out there. Um, I mean, I enjoyed my time, but it wasn't exactly what I was expecting. Um, and I had, you know, I'd maintained contact with Wilson and some of the guys out here. And my lease was ending. Um, these guys were coming out to Washington. Yep. And everything kind of fit together and stayed in touch with them and basically came back out. So Nice. Yep. So while you were with us in Missoula, pretty much all ops, fleet management, right? No. So okay. I actually did do some IT in Missoula. Um, I worked with Josh Allen down in what was the IT department. It was it was Josh Allen and his dog, Marlo. <laughs> um, that's what made up the IT team back in the day. Nice. And myself for a short while. Um, we did some work. Basically, when I was doing my internship, I worked with him, um, Jim Palmer and Wilson, and uh, 
basically the rest of the team was really, really good about building an internship that was tailored to me, mm -hmm. um, something that the University of Montana saw fit to actually fulfill the requirements of the, you know, whatever the business school deemed yeah. um, necessary to get an internship. So sure. they built something around that and I wound up building basically some kind of Excel spreadsheet or spreadsheet that was sent out weekly, um, listing like driver revenue, that kind of thing, help mm -hmm. fleet managers out, help drivers out. So that was fun. Um, and then from there, kind of moved to ops. Nice. And then what are you doing now in Pacific? What's your role? So I'm a planner uh, for Division 100, currently working out of the Seattle region. They mm -hmm. call it WA1. I've worked a little bit in Yakima, um, planning the Yakima region, and then also some of the Western 11 stuff is what I've done previously, but currently okay. just doing Division 100. For people who don't know what Division 100 is, what is it? That would be the heavy haul fleet, so the nice. P&W. Um, we've got the Western 11, which is basically the standard haul, mm -hmm. uh, standard weight, and then we've got the heavy haul up to 62 or 63,000. That would be the uh, the heavy haul, so Washington, yep. Oregon, Idaho, Montana. Is planning the heavy haul stuff a little bit different than some of the other things? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's a lot more condensed network, um, being that we offer the you know the the home weekly kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We've got a pretty condensed network of customers and, and lanes, that kind of thing. So it allows people to get home frequently, but it also um, changes the way we need to plan. You yeah. know, um, looking at weekly home counters definitely is something that's, sure. that's a little bit different for the heavy haul division versus Makes sense. the Western Eleven. When um, when you're starting out in ops as a fleet manager or whatever you were doing specifically in ops, what was a frustration you had early on that now? You're like, man, that's just part of the deal. That's just part of trucking. Oh, man. Um, well, like I said, I didn't have any experience in the job at first. So, I, I mean, I was basically... Everything was frustrating? Yeah, yeah. It was like, it was all new for me. Yeah. And anything that I knew was just basically reading it out of a rule book. You know, it was people mm -hmm. telling me this is the way it needs to be because that's... Um, I mean, it, you know, it was like guidelines for success. You know what I mean? But yeah. drivers who've been in the industry, who've been driving forever, they see little things that they know are going to cost them money, that kind of thing. Well, in my mind, I didn't necessarily see that. Um, so I would wind up trying to push drivers to do things that wasn't necessarily smart because that's, you know, that's what I've been taught. This is the kind of thing. But um, working through that, that's, that's tough for sure. But like you said, it's one of those things where um, you have to learn that that way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got to be thrown into it. You got to talk to drivers and have drivers getting frustrated, frustrated yeah. with you to, to really feel it. So. For sure. Um, was there, like, do you remember a moment in ops early on where it was kind of like a breakthrough, like something clicked? Or was it always just, you know, kind of a fire hose coming yeah. at you of work and stress? And I think it was stuff? probably more or less the fire hose thing. Um, until you get a fleet, I, I don't necessarily think that, but in, I think when you do get a fleet, you really get exposed to it. You know, I had a fleet of lease operators, and not that I think it's different with company drivers or anything like that, but um, with the lease operators, they had a little bit more... Um, focus on the revenue, that kind of thing, and they yep. had, a, you know, they had a lot more interest in the load itself. So you had a little bit more pushback from them as far as what was a good load and what wasn't. Sure. Um, so with that, just basically coming at you every single day, and every phone call was potentially a fight. You know, you start picking off things that are going to be problems, and For sure. and um, seeing things that are, you know, be a little bit easier. Yeah, and those days are long, right? I mean, and yeah, in Missoula, sure. you would start what like six a.m. So yeah, you'd probably yeah. be in the office before six. Yeah, you know, they were ten-hour days. Um, I mean, that was the minimum. More frequently than not, they were more than ten-hour days. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, it's just flying by. You know, that's one of the things that. I know a lot of people talk about the long hours, but everybody also says that it's accompanied by a quick day, you know, so it's, it's a little backwards in that sense, but, For sure. you know, it, it moves by. Yeah. If you weren't in trucking, what do you think you'd be doing? Um, shoot, I, to be honest with you, I have no idea. Um, I went with a business degree because I, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Sure. Um, I just, in general, or general, want to be successful. Um, saw an opportunity here, saw a growing company, love the people around and uh, took it and went with it. So as far as where I would be, not a clue, but. Yep, that's fair. Happy with where I'm at. Right, I started out um, more in technology and, sure. and stuff like that. And then um, just through the Wilsons made it into trucking. And the more I meet people in the industry, the more they're like, man, it, you were either born into it immediately, like most of the Wilsons, right? actually all the Wilsons, yeah. um, or it's like something that just kind of finds you. And yeah, absolutely, like anything really. Yeah, for sure, and then typically once you get in, you're probably not gonna get out. Yeah, yeah, well that's what, that's what <laughs> I'm finding right so now. It sounds so ominous, that's right. but it's not. Yeah, once you're in it, it's, it's, yeah. it's good. What's some stuff you like out of work? Um, 
Man, it's it's summer now, but I guess during the past winter, winter's long, so I've got I've got winter on my mind still. But uh -huh. um, snowboarding, that kind of thing. I'm going on a canoe trip this upcoming weekend. We're going to do some fishing. So Sweet. Who you fishing going with? is going to be fun. Two buddies from back home in Chicago. Awesome. So it'll be a good thing. It'll be up in the the Boundary Waters, mm -hmm. or uh, Quetico is another name for it. Yeah. I think that's like the Canadian side, but um, not a not a whole lot of hobbies outside of work. That's Doing a lot right. of work in these days, but yeah. you know, deep diving into it's not a bad thing for sure. Um, have you, do you have a lot of friends out here? I mean, you haven't been out in Pacific and in the Pacific Northwest that long. Um, are you making any friends out here or are you kind of just hanging with you know, the work crew? Definitely hanging with the work crew a lot. We have made some friends, um, but like I said, it, it, you know, it's a lot of work. Um, you got to find time for yourself and that's something that I'm definitely trying to focus on a little bit more is getting out there and meeting new people, but it's tough moving to a new place for sure. Um, it's like going to college, but you don't yeah. have that that close or I guess the the bigger group of people, you know for sure um, But like I said, I mean the people that I work with are, are great people mm -hmm. I want to be working for the company if I didn't enjoy the time that I spend with them So way too many hours sticking with these life. guys isn't so bad for sure. Um, so you moved over lived in Tacoma and then you recently you just moved didn't Yeah, you? yeah, I just Seattle? moved to West Seattle and uh, last Sunday actually. How is it? It's great. I love it. Yeah, it's it's kind of a mix between like it's got a nice blend between the big city uh -huh. and a little bit more of a homey feel, um, or like a smaller town feel. You can still see Seattle, but it's like a neighborhood. That's um, cool. The beach is right there, that Elk High Beach. So yeah. I actually haven't spent too much time. Like I said, I've I've only been there since Sunday, but from what I can tell, it's a pretty cool spot. Yeah. Tacoma's pretty so so. I'm happy to be getting out of there. Are you? Yeah. What What was your? Uh, honest, I mean, what did you like about know. it? And what didn't you? Um. Man, what did I like about it? it? It's not a bad place, you know? It's like, it's a city, like there's stuff to do, I guess. Yeah. Um, but where I was at, I was just kind of secluded out there. There wasn't a whole, there wasn't much of a younger crowd. Mm. Um, it seemed like whenever we would go out or anything like that, it was like you either pick, you know, you'd pick one bar. It wasn't like you could bounce around to different places or anything yeah, like that. that not sense. that I'm only going to bars or anything. <laughs> <laughs> when I did and if I do, to, I'll get yeah, iced tea. When I did go to bars, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Um, what uh, what's something that you did when you were growing up? Like, did you play sports? Did you play any yeah. instruments? Do anything? Um, like that? Man, I, I played sports. I wasn't much of a. Um, You're huge. Did you play oh basketball? God. I'm I'm tall now. I don't when know. When did about you get huge. tall? I got tall late in in, in high school. So I really didn't okay. spend too much time playing sports. So I like whatever. I played I played sports growing up like any kid would. Yeah. And I was like pretty good through middle school, and then everybody started growing like. Everybody started getting hairy. Everybody started getting tall, bigger, and I was just little old me, you know, <laughs> trying to compete with these, these men. Yeah, these men, yeah, prepubescent these, me. Right. Um, so I was just getting blown out of the water, and eventually it was like, all right, I'm gonna try this sport. I'm gonna try this one, and just unsuccessful in all of them, just like <laughs> repeatedly, just like, oh, this must not be my sport. Or so whatever. you settled on bowling. Yeah. That's, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> terrible bowling still. So, um, tried a number of different sports through high school, that kind of thing. Um, uh -huh. Really couldn't. I, I, honestly, I couldn't compete. So, but I was trying different things, um, and I finally started growing. Kind of got to a size where I could, you know, play things competitively. Once I got mm -hmm. into college, played some rugby up there, and that's actually what my core group of friends was was in the University of Montana, which was awesome. That's Love fun. those guys. Still talk to them. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's that's. I guess that's the extent of my my athletic, athletic my athletic <laughs> career. <laughs> so nice. hopefully this career goes a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, if you could live anywhere else that you haven't lived yet, where would you go? Uh, I think we were talking about this yesterday. Yeah. I, I, I mean, really, I would, I, I'm open to living anywhere. Um, I don't want to live in the southeast necessarily. I think it's like the humidity that I just really kind of want to avoid. Mm -hmm. um, but realistically, anywhere else, like a big city, anybody who said anything good about any city, I feel like I want to get out there and experience it a little bit. Yeah. You know, You'd I like feel like there's around. something to enjoy out there, and I'd like to see if it's something that I enjoy. For sure. Um, so, I, I mean, I would, realistically, I would live anywhere. Um, similar to like a career path. I don't have anything that I really wanted to do or wanted yeah. to live in, but I think I could find some enjoyment wherever I go. Just open for it. Yeah, that's cool. Along for the ride. What do you think you would enjoy doing if you were a truck driver in the off time? Like, would you be sitting there gaming? Would you be just binging Netflix? Would you be out pretending to work out? Like, what would you? Um, I would, would probably. You be doing on the road? I would probably try to do some workout. You know, I, I think I would be like stressed out or like, you know, just feel terrible about myself if I didn't try to get out there and do right. something and make myself feel better. Uh -huh. um, but more often than not, I'd probably be sitting in my truck watching some TV, playing some video games, bumping nice. docks and, and driving, man. <laughs> yeah, making money. Would you do it? Oh, I would love to do it, yeah. For yeah. like, I, you know, I say, I, I, I mean, I would like to give it a shot for like a year or something, but, for sure. you know, whether Have that's you met, happen, um, I don't know. Mark Walther? 
No. Okay, he is a fleet manager in Springfield. Uh, you know what? He's from Maine? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I have met him. Yeah, he drove um, for us for, oh, shoot, I don't know how long. Yeah, like I've talked to him. Like that. Yeah, I've met him a few times in uh, Missoula and I think up here maybe before or maybe in Montana. I don't know. I don't know. He's probably been in Montana. Yeah. I don't know if he's been out here or not. Yeah, I've definitely met him though. Anyways, he just has some good stories. Yeah, good guy. Yep, for sure. Mark. <laughs> Marky Mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's something that you felt when when you were in fleet management that you couldn't clear, like something that was always a, a misunderstanding or a conversation that you were constantly having with your drivers that either you felt you weren't communicating clearly enough or they just weren't understanding or was something that you were like, man, I talk about this every day. Yeah. Why does this keep coming up? Yeah, I think that a lot of the thing, when we were working with the Prime Network, um, that was such a well-built built network. You know, um, mm-hmm. Deadhead, I think, was one of the biggest things that you would constantly find yourself getting into arguments about. Sure. Regardless of what the revenue was on the load, you'd always have an argument with somebody uh, just basically about the deadhead on the front end, even if the rate per mile is there. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of arguments about that. Uh, fuel mileage, that was a big one. A lot of lease operators just want to, you know, they want to get the best paying loads. They don't necessarily want to pay attention, or some of them don't want to pay attention to their, their fuel mileage. Um, so it was little things that, you know, at the end of the week are going to add up to a, a, a more substantial paycheck, mm-hmm. you know, whereas they want the, the quicker, easier thing. They want a better paying load, which makes sense. I mean, you can't fight with them. They want to make more money. For sure. Um, but conveying to them that there's not necessarily all of these great paying loads is a difficult thing and that they need to, what they can control, they need to control and do better mm-hmm. and kind of trust the network and let the rest do itself. Yeah. What do you think you would do differently if you went back to having a fleet? Like, is there one thing that you're like, man, I could have done a heck of a lot better at um, this one specific thing? I think I would have just not stressed out quite so much, which is a tough thing to say now because I still find myself stressing out quite yeah. a bit, you know. But there's just so many things that are out of your control, like I said. I mean, just as the drivers are, you know, worried about getting the load that, pay, that pays the best, you're going to get drivers that are going to complain a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to get drivers that don't understand things and just basically drivers who just aren't happy doing what they're doing ultimately. And you're the guy that they're talking to on the phone daily, so they're going to take it out on you. Um, which, you know, it's, it's not fun talking to somebody who's real upset all the time, but realistically, if it's out of your control, it's out of your control and just, sure. you know, let it go. But yeah. definitely would spend a lot of time stressing out about stuff and that made it hard for sure. But yeah. When you left the office, did you find yourself, um, logging back in and doing some stuff yeah. or did you kind of leave it? To yeah, for sure. Coverage? Uh, I mean, <laughs> Dealing with some of the sales coordinators over at Prime, they were ruthless, man. It was like, you know, you'd <laughs> see so? these you'd see these fleet messages going out that's like, you can't be late on this load or else. It's like, oh my dun, God. Dun, dun. Yeah, I and mean, you'd find like four of those loads on your trucks. You're like, oh my God, I got to find a way to get all these delivered on time. What were some of and those inevitably, customers? Mastinardi sticks out in my Yeah, head. Mastronardi, uh, Farmland Foods, yeah. uh, like Tyson towards the end was a big For one. Sure. So any of those meat loads were pretty... Pretty intense. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know, but you know, you would find it seemed like more often than not those would be the loads that ended up on your trucks at the end of the day, and they'd be For on sure. like the drivers who were the least dependable and everything. Yeah, like, man, you or probably like want to. They're sick. Yeah, yeah. Like, you want to put this on somebody on. else, maybe? And it's <laughs> like that's who we got. It's like, yeah. Okie dokie. <laughs> I'm staying to work until seven o'clock tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's Friday. Awesome. Oh, man, that's funny. Um, Do you like technology? Are you big into, like, new tech and kind of early adopting? You know, I I think I was more so before when it seemed like all the, you know, the new technology was coming out. And um, I don't know. Everything seems to be blending together now, and it's just like Mm -hmm. whatever. You know, I I see all these, like, nice TVs and everything, but they all pretty much do the same thing now. They all got Netflix on them. Yeah, I found myself, like, looking at specs on TVs and laptops and all this stuff. And now I, like... I, they all basically do what I needed to do. For I'm sure. like, I don't need to worry about this. Just yeah. get one that's reasonably priced that does what I need, and I'm good now. Right. So less so now. I used to do it a, a whole lot. I used to obsess over what I was buying and mm-hmm. pay too much attention to now it. And you're just like, yeah, that'll be yeah. fine. I'm like, eh. <laughs> I calls people, I'm good. For can, sure. It's got a remote. Yeah. That's, that's the one I want. That'll work. Yeah. Um, what do you think about autonomous vehicles? Not trucks specifically, but like Teslas and, and any other... I would get a Tesla in a heartbeat. You I, would? I'm less so interested in the uh, the autonomous... Mm-hmm. Um, but more the electric and just, I like just the speed yeah, of Yeah, the speed of it is ridiculous to me. Like, yeah. you you know, the, everybody talks about these 0 to 60 on all these sports cars and that kind of thing. And then Tesla mm-hmm. just came out and it's like 2.3 seconds and they're, yeah. they're like standard vehicles. Like, right. What? Yeah, How is this not a bigger ridiculous. deal, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely interested in them. Um, I think the autonomous cars are awesome. I think mm-hmm. it's inevitable, but 
Um, I, I don't know, as far as personally, I just think it's a sleek car. I like the big monitor in the front. Sure. I like how fast it is. I think it's all around cool. Yeah, I doing would good take, things. I would take one too. Yeah. Um, I mean, autonomous driving on the highway, like I don't have any problem with that. In theory, obviously, I've never, I haven't done it yet. Right. Um, I've been in some cars where, you know, they're definitely like lane keeping technology and stuff yeah. like that. And I haven't experienced it being finicky. I know that we're still really early on in that technology being in our trucks. Sure. Um, but it's quickly going to evolve. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you see it in cars right now. For you sure. You know, like the, I, I've got a Subaru right now and it's got the, like the lane, what is it, lane? Departure. Yeah, the lane departure technology, and it works great. Yep. Um, and it's also got the, uh, like, geez, I don't even, what is it, like the? Blind spot? Cruise, well, blind spot, like the cruise control, like the, I don't even Oh, know. yeah, yeah, so it'll, like, it'll yeah, slow you slow down. slow you down, down it'll break. accelerate yep. you, it'll bring you to a complete stop. Keep and then that all you following. Gotta, yeah, it's crazy, right. you know, and you, you, you look at cars, like, 10 years ago, yeah. they didn't even have the blind spot, you know, so event, I mean, sure. I think the only thing holding trucks back are just regulations, that kind of thing. I think they probably have the technology to do it, mm -hmm. maybe not within city limits or anything like that, but on the interstate, yeah. I can't imagine they don't have the ability to, it's just a matter of for making sure. sure that it's safe, you know. But I don't think there's going to be a point in our lifetime even that drivers are totally replaced. No. I, I mean, so. you might have some sort of, um, oh, what do they call it, where uh, you would have like a lead truck platooning. Right, sure. so like maybe that would be autonomous, um, you know, fully driverless behind a truck or something right. like that. But I don't think. I mean, if I was, if I was younger and I wanted to start a career in trucking, I don't think I would hesitate thinking, oh man, I'm not going to have a job in three years. I don't think that's the case no, at all. no, I don't think so either. Um, I mean, I don't know. The first, I, I'm by no means an expert on this, but You're I can't not? imagine it is. You Professor know? Trucker. Yeah, that's right. You're asking <laughs> me like I know. I'm like right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I mean, um, I'm just like re reiterating yeah, and, I, and talking about articles or headlines. I didn't even read the article. Right. I just read the headline. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the only important part, right? You For just sure. got to read the headline, and then you pretty much know what you're talking about. Yeah, um, exactly. Expert of all the things. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I read all the headlines I possibly can to get all the information. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I, yeah, I think you're right. I don't think they're going to be taking people out of trucks anytime soon or really even vehicles. Mm -hmm. Obviously, vehicles would be first, but... I, God only knows when that's going to happen. For sure. If it does. Well, so when, um, I mean, you kept bugging me to do one of these interviews. Right. Uh, finally, I got to fit it in for you. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, I talked about all the different topics that you wanted to. Yeah, autonomous cars, I think, is one of them. <laughs> uh, stand up comedy. Yeah. We didn't talk about anything. I don't know why this. Yeah. I don't want to do stand up, what, what, by the way. What else do you want to talk about? Um, man, what do I want to talk about? Well, uh, I don't know how, how often people talk about how to talk to like ask you questions. And they these don't. Things. All right, my flip of the script here. Go Maybe for give it. This a shot. Uh, ask right. me a question. Um, how many siblings do you have? I have three older sisters, a younger sister, and a younger brother. Three older sisters, huh? Yep. Wow. How do you like that? They, you need, wait, you said a younger brother too? Yeah. And oh, a younger okay. Brother. So you got so, some brothers. Yeah. So eldest sister is forgive me, Chandra. I don't exactly know your oh, age. Oh man. Yeah, it's Look like at this. yeah, it's like fifty-six. <laughs> I'm thirty-one, um, and my younger brother is twenty-six. Very nice. Yeah. So pretty big. Yeah, pretty that's big gap. a very big gap. It I, is. I thought yeah. I had some older siblings that For I think sure. my it's eight, six, and four years older uh -huh. than me. So, so the two is the the two oldest ones. Um, were born up north, and then my family bounced around a little bit. So they were in Pennsylvania, then Minnesota. Oh, so like real far up north. Now yeah, like for sure. And then um, Chicago for a little bit, and then nice. after Chicago, down to Dallas, and then all the rest of us were born. So I grew up in Dallas. And you met this whole gang. You went to school with Cameron, is that right? Yeah. In Arkansas? To, yep. Cool. Where are you exactly. from? Texas originally, right? Yep, cool. Dallas. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'd love to get out there. Have you, have you been to Dallas at all? I've never been to, I've never been to Texas. Really? Yeah, I've been okay. to New Mexico. I've been to like Albuquerque, but that's as yeah. close as I've gotten. Nice. Yeah. So. Yeah, I grew up city boy. Beautiful. In, Me too. In the suburbs. I was I was right on, the man. suburban kid, Dude, man. Same here. Ugh. Same here. I think that uh, I think <laughs> God, I get a lot, get a lot of um, flack about this, uh, but I, like Naperville was ranked like the number two kid place to raise a kid. Really? Like the place I went to high school, I think was on like Oprah for being yeah, like man, just too I, nice. I'm like, oh God. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of my. I'm like Chris Rock in the longest <laughs> yard. I'm me. like, I gotta stab somebody to get my rep up here, <laughs> yeah. you know? That's the same with me too. Luckily enough, I played a little bit of hockey, so there's like an ounce of toughness in me. I Outside gotcha. of that, I'm. I didn't play any hockey, so I'm just completely. <laughs> you played rugby. Yeah, but that was when I was older. So when I was in high, well, well I guess when I was in high school, rugby. people weren't giving me yeah, flag about right. being in that high school. So okay, you're right. Cool. Right on. Yeah. Sweet. 
Sweet. That was good, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, dude. Uh, All right. That was good. Um, real quick, if you have any questions for Trucko or anything like that, you want to talk to him, just comment below. Like, subscribe, share, do all those things. Um, you should put it on your Facebook. Or do you have Facebook? I've got a Facebook. Do you have an Instagram? I've got an Instagram. Cool. I think there's no inappropriate photos on there, so <laughs> we should be all good. <laughs> What's your username? I think it's T Trucko with a K, like okay. Trucko. Cool. Make sure you block him. Yeah. Nice. Um, and then uh, Facebook is just Ty Trucko. So. Sweet. Right Follow me, like, subscribe, whatever. <laughs> cool. Thanks.